And at Prenton Park, the atmosphere building towards kickoff in this, the first of the new season's matches for clubs in Europe. Many played this afternoon as we were talking earlier, and tonight, really a special atmosphere with, of course, Rangers taking on Shelbourne. And both teams have had to travel, so have their supporters, and both have come here full of hope. Well, let's look at it in a little more detail. And the Shelbourne tra players have been training in Merseyside for a couple of days now. Forced to move because of the decision to switch the match. Rangers have a lot of support in Ireland. But in 1984, when they played in the Republic, there were a lot of crowd problems. Shelbourne shows they weren't forced to move the match. The club were left with no other decision to make. The police uh, had information that maybe there was a possibility of um, people coming down maybe from the north to cause trouble. There's also that uh, faction in Dublin of Celtic versus Rangers. Uh, and to avoid, at this stage in Ireland too, it's this, uh, the marching season. And just to avoid any possibility of uh, danger, it was decided to transfer. If we hadn't, and something had happened, I mean, we would have been hung out to dry. Uh, uh, nothing is worth, nothing is worth that. But let no one be in any doubt, this is a very big game for the Irish side. Huge disappointment because in the past couple of years they, they didn't have some very didn't have really good draws. This is really attractive draw and we were t you're talking about having um, a full house in Talca Park which is 12,000 people in a very tight stadium and for the, for the players they wouldn't have they wouldn't have even experienced that and that would have been great. I, I, they would I don't think that would have been something they would have remembered. But that's the hand we've been dealt. And uh, I, I, I'm not in the business now of making excuses before we start. We're big boys, and we just have to go ahead and do, do our work. Well, that work could have been in the Champions League, barring a last day upset. But the players remain confident of the task that lies ahead tonight. We'll give a good account of ourselves, that's the main thing for us. It's a big game for us, as I said, and you don't get them that often. So, I mean, realistically, I don't think we'll beat them over the two legs, but we might surprise them on one of them, so hopefully it might be this one. They're a huge club. They've got lots of money. They obviously want to win the Scottish League again this year and do well in Europe. So they brought in a big manager with big players and big money, and, you know, if that's the way it is, that's the way it is. We can't compete with it money-wise, but hopefully we'll compete on the night. Pat Morley is a former Celtic trialist and another man who knows a lot, former Arsenal's Pat Scully. Yeah, the training is very good here. I mean, I know it's a part-time club, but we've got a good family at the club. We've got some excellent coaches, we've got a good manager and we've got a good pool of players here. And we try and do it as professionally as we possibly can. Nominally, Shelbourne are the home side tonight, but that really does count for nothing once the big kickoff takes place. It's quite simply a case of them going out against the aristocrats who come down from Glasgow. With Rangers under new management, with a host of new players, knowing that Europe means almost everything to them, apart from winning another championship. The new men include Lionel Chabonnier, Arthur Newman of the Netherlands, who's come from PSV Eindhoven, Andre Kanchelskis, formerly of Manchester United, Everton and Fiorentina of Italy. Giovanni van Brockhorst from the Netherlands, who's come from Feyenoord. And as well as that, they have a new coach in Dick Avocat from PSV Eindhoven. Well, really, I've only been in the last three or four days, so it's, it's hard for me to say anything. But the, the boys, are, the signs are fair, oh, the boys are enjoying it. It's different kind of training, different uh, ideas and whatever, so the uh, first signs are very favourable. Yeah, actually, as you say, there was a, a mass exodus at the end of the season with a lot of players going out. As you say, we brought on a lot of new players in, a lot of good quality players. So, yeah, it might take them a little bit of time to settle in, but uh, as I say, they're good quality players, so uh, this early it shouldn't be a problem for them. That surely is the question about tonight's game. Has Dick Advocat had time to instill a team into Rangers and knit the group of individuals into a high-class outfit? It's unfortunate for him, uh, but uh, there's no easy games in Europe, as, as we've, we've known to our course in the last few years. We give them the same respect as we give any other side. 
and jury is well aware Shelbourne are no stranger to Scottish opposition. Well, they played against Kilmarnock last year. Uh, gave Kilmarnock uh, a tough game over two legs, so uh, a tough game, but it's one we're very much looking forward to. Well, tonight Rangers need to hit the ground running and move a big step closer to the next round. They'll need to be at their best, or else Irish eyes will be smiling on Merseyside after a huge upset. Rangers know it's up to them to perform. And the warm-ups almost complete, and the crowd building towards the kickoff of this UEFA Cup tie. It's the one they've been talking about, and it's live here on Eurosport. It's Shelbourne of Ireland against Rangers of Scotland. It's being played in England, and it's one, to put it mildly, that should be an absolute classic. Welcome back to Prenton Park, the countdown to kick off now very much upon us and the supporters who've come from the north and from the west have arrived in Merseyside in good voice, looking forward to a cracking contest which will be described for us by Billy McNeil and your match commentator whom we now say good evening to, Tim Capel. Welcome back then to Prenton Park. Now joining us alongside tonight is Billy McNeil. Now Billy, the weather conditions here tonight are slightly autumnal feel to them rather than summer. Well, I think there is something in that, Tim. But um, having said that, uh, you know, it's a good night for football. Uh, the pitch is absolutely magnificent. And uh, I think we might be in for a, a little bit of a treat tonight. Now, what do you think about the decision to stage the match here in uh, Prenton Park in Liverpool rather than in Dublin? Well, I think from a Rangers point of view, they'll be quite pleased with it because it takes any suspense out of the, the, the fixture for them. Um, I think from Shelburne's point of view, they're giving an awful lot away. They're giving away that, that home advantage. It's probably unfortunate for them that a lot of the public won't be able to see the game. But um, yeah, I think from a Rangers point of view, it'll work well for them. Now, about the game itself, what weaknesses, if any, can Shelbourne exploit in this Rangers side? Well, to be honest with you, um, we're all intrigued um, waiting for the announcement of the Rangers side because very few of us really know much about the players. Obviously, I think the biggest thing they can try to exploit is the lack of maybe understanding and appreciation of each other's abilities because it's a very new side, whatever squad is, is chosen. And uh, it's been a very short time that the, the new manager has had to work with them. So I think the biggest thing that they have in their advantage is perhaps to, to spring a surprise, go at them and, and maybe create sort of little bits of disturbances simply because they don't know each other's way of playing. Now, as we said, it's not just a new team, it's also a new manager for Rangers. It surprised many Dick Advocar making his way up to Ibrox, but uh, a very experienced coach. Well, that's right, and I think, you know, looking at it from the, the, the outside, I think he's an, an excellent choice because he is vastly experienced. Dutch football is, uh, uh, is well regarded, and he is well regarded as a coach. I think it's an excellent choice, but it'll be interesting just to see how much he's achieved in such a short period of time. Now, what has gone wrong for uh, Glasgow Rangers in the past? I mean, they've lavished money on the team, yet they've achieved relatively little. Well, in the European sense, they've achieved relatively little. In the Scottish sense, they had all that success winning leagues uh, nine times in a row. But I think the problem was that the, the, the team started to grow all together. An awful lot of the stalwarts were all together. Ali McCoy, Richard Goff, Andy Gorham. And then the, the Gascoigne influence, the Loudrop influence started to diminish. And when that happened, everything just fell asunder. Now, what about, about Shelbourne tonight? Are they likely to be overawed by this occasion? There's a huge following made its way down from Scotland, uh, a slightly smaller one from uh, across the Irish Sea. Well, my experience of playing uh, Irish teams is that they tend to accommodate the situation well. They know that uh, if it goes down in paper, then they don't have really much of a chance. But um, they'll, they'll go out there to enjoy themselves, they'll express themselves, and I don't think they'll be overawed at all. And we might just get one or two little surprises, but at the end of it, I can't see anything other than a Rangers victory. I was going to say now to your favourite part, the, uh, the, the score prediction game. Now, uh, 
No, it's a difficult one to predict. As I say, you know, obviously, th this is still very much a pre-season game for, from Rangers' point of view, as it is for Shelburne. But I think Rangers will be happy with, uh, with uh, a, a one-goal victory. I, I really do think that. OK, we'll take a short commercial break. Join us again in a couple of minutes for the game live. live to Euro Cups with active driving active safety Subaru a very warm welcome back then to Prenton Park from me Tim Cable and Billy McNeil now the last side that took Shelbourne a little too lightly with Kilmarnock in the Cup Winners Cup last year and they ended up hanging on to a 3-2 victory. And as the Dick Advocar reign begins, though, few expect anything other here tonight than a comprehensive victory for Glasgow Rangers. Their main problem, though, tonight could well be that the team is not yet really functioning as a unit. It's hoped it will become in the future. Advocar has had little time to work with his players since arriving from Holland, so understanding on the field may not become apparent from the beginning. Advocar himself, though, has been very low-key in the build-up to this game, but may absolutely no mistake he's patently aware of what success in Europe means to Rangers but after so many disappointing seasons in Europe in recent times successful Rangers this season would not necessarily mean winning the UEFA Cup reaching the latter stages and not having to compete in the qualifying rounds next season would be a step in the right direction now alongside me is Billy McNeil Billy I've just said that success may not be lifting the trophy but a run to the latter stages and not having to compete in uh, basically July next season would be a step forward for them. I think very much so. Um, I have the feeling that would be exactly the type of things that um, Dick Advocate will be saying to Rangers. He let's not have too big a horizon. Let's think of get progressing in this competition. I think it's important uh, for Scottish clubs to do some some justice to themselves in European competition because it's a long time since that's happened and obviously that will be very much in Rangers' mind. You've got to remember that um, they lost the league in, in, in Scotland for the first time in a long time last season. It'll be important to the supporters and to the people inside Ibrox that they make some progress in a European competition. Now, Georges Alves is uh, quoted in the press all over uh, the UK today as saying that, well, let's just forget it for this season and concentrate on winning the Scottish Premier League. Well, I would think that, uh, given a choice, the Ibrox faithful, I would think, would, would choose winning the league would be the preferable option. But um, I think what uh, Albert said is a lot of good sense. He, he, he said, let's be cautious, let's not be too optimistic, let's not set the targets too high, let's see how well we progress in the early rounds before we start talking about the later rounds. A lot of common sense in that, but I would think that uh, uppermost in all Rangers players' minds this year will be try to win that league back again. Now, £20 million uh, Advocat has spent this summer bringing in six players, £18 million last season. That is a very, very large amount of money. And maybe uh, some of the Rangers fans we were talking to before, uh, before the game, there's an expectation that, uh, you know, this guy, Al Bears, we want success in Europe, and surely with this amount of money, you know, we shouldn't have to wait for teams to gel. They should be capable, they're professionals, of just going out there and winning this. I think there's a lot of truth in that, that um, to me, often players, and the way, their, their teams and the way they play are down to the quality of the players. And if you, if you have, and if you do buy players of the top quality, then you expect them to, to get themselves organised very much more quickly than ordinary players. But uh, having said that, it's never desperately easy. It is very early in the season for Rangers, and indeed for Shelburne as well, I suppose. But um, if you look at the lineup, there are very few of the big names, the big recent signings in that lineup, and most of them are, are players that were there last year, with the, the exception of Van Bronckhorst from Feyenoord. Well, we know that there is uh, no Andre Kanchelskis. He is uh, injured. There's no Negri, of course, as well. He's uh, playing with the reserves these days. Prenton Park is uh, not full by any means this afternoon or this evening, but there is uh, a pretty large contingent of Rangers fans that you can see in the Tramia Rovers home stand behind the back of the goal. And these, this is one of these grounds, Billy, where the stands are so close to the field that you don't really need an awful lot of people in to generate a great atmosphere. 
No, that's right. There certainly will be atmosphere. I mean, the Rangers fans have travelled a long way. Uh, they'll, they'll be down here. Typical Scottish crowd. They'll make lots of noise and they'll create lots of atmosphere. But the ground, the, the pitch itself is in magnificent condition. And uh, I think we might well have a very exciting game in prospect. Well, there is the Rangers lineup Confirmation. Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, the one new signing of the summer, is to take his place on the field. Now, Shelbourne, uh, Billy, they're a hard side, and I mean that in the physical sense. Well, yeah, I, I think they, they, they very well will be. You know, Dermot Keeley, the manager, uh, was a very powerful centre-half, a good centre-half in, in, in the, the Irish League, and... You know, to be quite frank with you, I would imagine he'll have a competitive side play tonight. Shelbourne get the game underway then in the red shirts. Alan Goff. And they've promised to attack right from the start, Shelbourne. They've got absolutely nothing to lose, they say. 15 is Dean Fitzgerald. Chabonnier, the uh, goalkeeper who arrived from Auxerre, is on the bench tonight. He took a, a little bit of a knock before he got here. Six is Scully. Twenty-three there, Graham. And Rangers will need to get a hold of this game and just calm things down very quickly. Uh, Billy and settle into their stride because Shelbourne will hustle them. They've started in that mood already. They seem to be very positive. They're, they're having a go. They're not here to, to be second best. They're not here just to enjoy the occasion. And at the moment, they're really having a go at Rangers. Well, there is uh, McCarthy intercepted this time by Porini. That's a good ball out wide here. 18 is Gattuso. And he's a real handful, is Gattuso. player, a great favourite amongst the Ibrox faithful. Gagan covering him. And the keeper got a connection to that only just. Staying forward, intercepted by McCarthy. is Rutherford that's a poor ball given away it's far too easily there to uh, Albert nine is Gordon Dury very little time off for Gordon Dury almost straight back into training after the uh, World Cup run and already Shelbourne forced to the back foot. This is Porini inside Rutherford. Porini continues his run. Well, even at this early stage, not a red shirt in sight. Two strikers, Morley and Kelly for Shelburne. assistance tonight from Romania. Now, Shelbourne, uh, Billy, are lining up with a fairly standard 4-4-2 formation here. There's nothing uh, particularly new about the way they're going to play tonight. They've not adopted a style to suit the opposition. No, they haven't. Obviously, they're playing to their own strengths, but, you know, Rangers look very comp confident at the moment. They're well organised as well, and to be quite honest with you, they, they, they are really looking good at this moment. Gattuso as well. Again, now there's a chance here. That was Graham once again. And wide, number 12, Van Bronckhorst. And uh, does well to keep the ball in there, Van Bronckhorst. 
a man with plenty of European experience from the past couple of years, just 23 years of age, played in all fine odds uh, Champions League games last season, and uh, made it to the final of the European Cup Winners Cup, where Feyenoord lost against Rapid Vienna a couple of years ago. Or is Petric, and already Rangers appear to have taken some of the sting out of the uh, Shelbourne team, and they're now just sat back inviting Rangers to come forward. This is Porini again. They're looking for Graham. And Dermot Keeley, a man you know well, Billy. Certainly do. Uh, um he was a good player with Dundalk and Ireland. I tried to offer him a deal at Celtic years ago, but... Um, As Jury gets to the byline, this is going to be an opening. No, the goalkeeper was quick to read the situation. Jury doing very well to get to the line, and Declan Gagan was lost momentarily. It was a good break uh, by Rangers. Gordon Jury's pace uh, is excellent. Good ball into the middle and might have come to something better. Morini getting things going again. 18 is Gattuso. A bit sloppy there, though, from Gattuso. And we talked, uh, Billy, before, and we said, are Shelburne likely to be overawed? They look that way just at the moment. I think that's more down to the excellent way the Rangers have, have approached and started the game. Very positive, very confident. Nice bit of organisation style about them, and they look full of running. Well, they've got something to prove to this man, Dick Advocar is a disciplinarian. Porini's ball forward again. And Vakai, you may remember, in charge of the uh, Dutch side in the World Cup in USA 1994, where the discipline was felt by many of the players to be uh, a little too much. Goff's kick. Seven is uh, Baker. That's a decent ball by Baker. And it's an in goal. Unbelievable start. And Rangers go behind. And it's Perini who put the ball past Nimi. The first ball played into the penalty area. And Rangers' defence was all over the place. One red shirt in there, and Billy, that is an absolute disaster. Well, it's certainly bad defending, but, you know, Jonas Turner was way back in there in the heart of his defence, and you hardly think there was a necessity for that, but when he did make, make contact, Perini really literally tried to clear it, but the position that he was in, he had great difficulty in getting away from his own goals, and really it's the first effort, that uh, the first time, really, that Shelburne had been in Rangers' half. Well, there were some that expected little more than a practice match here for Glasgow Rangers. They've got work to do here. Now, can Shelbourne keep a semblance of cool and a semblance of calm? And just uh, a little too much pace on the ball and the vastly outnumbered support. is now beginning to make its voice heard here. Suddenly, the Rangers fans have gone deathly quiet. Jury's forward looking. And again, we said, Billy, that uh, it would take time for this side to gel as a unit. Well, certainly, Dick Advocat will be disappointed at losing a goal so easily because it was a straightforward ball in from the right-hand side. Um, the two central defenders got themselves into no-man's land. Jonas Tern was right in there, couldn't manage to, to cope with the, the ball, and Perini, unfortunately, turned it in his own net, but he'll be disappointed at the, the lack of a positive action at the back there. Fantastic atmosphere inside Pretton Park here this evening. And although I'm sure it's not uh, the last goal that we're going to see this evening, we couldn't have wished for a better start. Not only to the UEFA campaign, but to Eurosport's European campaign. Goff 
just aiming long again. Forward by 10. There's an extra spring in the step of Shelburne now. Now a chance for Perini to make amends as he gets forward. Taken then by Gagan. Well, the uh, kicking skill in terms of uh, length gain certainly not in question from Goff, just a little of the accuracy at the moment is missing. That's Smith's ball downfield. Temporary stay surely believed for uh, Nimi in the uh, goal until Charbonnier is fit. Well, he, he came uh, with a good reputation. He didn't have an awful lot of games last season, but those the games that he did have, he looked he looked a useful goalkeeper. It's uh, it's nice to have competition in all positions, and I think there will be competition in that position this season. looking to pick up the ball again nobody's seen him just as yet this is Porini Graham uh, is there waiting once again for possession to be given to it six is Jonas turn and again Shelburne very quick to close down the space not allow Glasgow Rangers a lot of time now on the break that's a good bit of play there from Rutherford, still going Rutherford, he's got to wait though, there's nobody up with him just at the moment, it's Rutherford against Porini. Still going Rutherford and did well to get the cross in. Turned up for a trial about six years ago, Rutherford from uh, Birmingham City and stayed. Well, it's an interesting system that they're using just at the minute, they've got uh, Morley up front on his own, with Kelly playing in the hole just behind him and Rutherford and Baker wide on either side. And Rutherford looks very interesting at this time. Good cross ball in there, but well taken certainly by the goalkeeper. But, you know, they're very progressive down either side. And obviously the confidence level has risen. Well, he's certainly got the uh, equal of Porini for pace. Well, it couldn't have been a worse start, really, this for Dick Abacar. He'll certainly be very disappointed because, in fairness, his team started very well, very confidently, pushing the ball about, knocking it about with lots of confidence, but the first question mark made of his defence, he'll lose a goal. There's Rutherford getting stuck in once again, but he's lost out this time. 18 is Gattuso. And that's a man that certainly does know how to mix it up in the middle of the field. There's Rutherford again, and he wins the free kick. Real gutsy player, Gattuso. He's a real fiery little player. I think he's got tremendous ability and potential, but uh, he's sometimes just got to watch his temper. There's Gagan with the kick. Uh, looking for uh, Rutherford. It's important, though, Billy, at this stage that Rangers keep their composure, keep their calm and keep their shape. Very much so. I think one of the aspects of finding it troublesome that um, the system they're playing, Gattuso is playing slightly out of position on this right-hand side and likewise Alberts on the left-hand side. And I think that's a difficult they've got. They're not natural wide players, either of the two of them. And really with uh, Alberts' shooting power, they're really missing the benefit of having him that bit closer inside. Not a great ball by Baker, but it's... Uh is the number 11 of Rutherford nonetheless well as the uh, 
uh, begin to maybe commit a few uh, more players forward in search of this equalizing goal. They've got to be aware of the dangers of the counter-attack from Sheldon. Space so far. Well, Van Bronckhorst made an excellent run, and I have the feeling that might well have been a corner kick in different circumstances. But good ball by Jury, and if he's going to be as positive as that, then that will obviously be good for Rangers because that's exactly the type of run they're going to need from the back. Well, one of the uh, newer generation of rising Dutch talent, Van Bronckhorst, along with the likes of Roy Mackay and Dave Vandenberg. The era after, of course, the uh, Davids and Seedorf, but they haven't quite hit the heights of uh, the Davids or Seedorfs just yet. But a lot is certainly expected at Glasgow Rangers anyway of Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. That was not a good ball by Amarusu. It illustrates the difficulty Rangers are having at the minute because immediately they get possession, Shelburne drop off, leave one player morally up front, the rest go back to retreat into the midfield and into defence and say, if you can have the ball in your own half, but you're going to find it difficult to break us down. Rutherford leaving the ball to go and take a position inside the Rangers half. Here he is again, Rutherford, he's tripped from behind. Leons is the referee. Six is Jonas' turn. And again, that was a very... Uh, Poor piece of play from Glasgow Rangers. 11 Albers. Gordon Jury getting to the byline, cuts inside his man. Good shot and a good save by Goff. Good play though, Billy, by Gordon Jury. Very much, much so. He's good at breaking in those wide positions, but look at this. That's good skill. Brings it back, drags it on his right foot. A good stop by the goalkeeper. Stood up to it got over the bar, but uh, good run and shot by Jury. Uh, the first real save he's had to make, but it will give him confidence. And that's another save this time with the feet. It's not clear just yet. Turn was in there, trying to poke it back inside. That was good play by uh, Goff once again to get down that quickly with his feet. And that's uh, not going to be a free kick. Play answers the referee. This is Gordon Jury still. Out wide here is Porini. turn and again Rangers finding no way through and having to come back to regroup and rebuild and all of a sudden the uh, words in the press this morning of uh, George Albert seemingly having a ring of truth about them after 18 minutes here at Prenton Park. Amoruso. Porini. Still may drop this time to the number 11, Albert. Well, maybe Perini should have perhaps had an attempt on goal there himself, Billy. 
he might well have done, but this is the area that Talbert's is good and in that inside, rather than, than, than wide on the left-hand side, in that inside area where he's got tremendous striking power, and if he gets his chance to have a shot at goals, then the goalkeeper will know all about it. Well, a pensive-looking Dick Abacar on the bench. Borini again. Turn. And back on the chase goes Petric. Borini. And again given away. This is Rutherford again. There's nobody up in support with him though once again. And we're going to have to learn to be a little quicker. But he's done really well to keep hold of the ball of possession. Just escapes him though. Jury. Fitzgerald. Well, that's a good ball. And going into the penalty area is Morley if he can get the ball across. No, he can't. And Yimi this time as Morley peeled away to the back post. Shelburne are retreating and making life very, very difficult for them. Rutherford across to cover Porini. Porini's uh, made some space for himself inside if Gattuso can get the ball in, but that was again a really good challenge from uh, Gagan. Rutherford didn't really look where he was playing the ball and can see he's just giving possession back to uh, Rangers. The ball wall there by uh, Van Bronckhorst. It uh, really didn't open up anything at all. Here he is again. Van Bronckhorst will try a shot from distance and squirms wide of Goff's goal. Looks a, a, a competent, a very competent player, Van, Van Bronckhorst, but um, that's the type of thing Rangers have been forced into simply because of the numbers that Shelburne have got back. Kelly 
trying to buzz around and pick up the loose ball in the middle of the field, but this time it's Petrich. Amoruso. And Goff getting his body behind the ball. Good positioning by the keeper, just in case there are any uh, awkward bounces. They're not the easiest to save, those, are they? They're certainly not. Certainly the pitch is very true, and the goalkeeper took it very confidently. But um, that's the type of thing, to beat a retreating defence, that you've sometimes got to shoot from out far. And a shove in the back. And uh, Jury gives away a free kick. But he's looked fairly lively, Gordon Jury, considering that he's had uh, basically an unbroken year almost. Well, that's right. Um, it, has played, uh, it has been a long season from certainly last season. He wasn't always chosen from the start, and um, he'll have press, but he'll be trying to prove a point and make sure that he's first name on the team sheet. Certainly, he, he has got pace, he is prepared to break into the wide areas, and I think sometimes he does too much of his running away from that centre forward beat. 32 years of age, though, now, Gordon Dury. trying to slip inside two men there's Gattuso come charging in there when things were looking a little hesitant Gattuso just goes steaming in he's certainly all action and uh, there's no halfway halfway measure from it David Graham has gone in there and really he didn't try to put his foot over the ball that was a good challenge I felt and but nevertheless the referee gave a foul tonight and they're enjoying every moment so far this is Gattuso still going Gattuso here's a chance the keeper's out good save once again it's still not clear Rutherford gets it away good work once again from Rutherford and Dury will be a little disappointed but once more the driving force behind the run from the middle of the field is Gattuso who's coming more and more into the game and Dury won't be happy with his first touch there the keeper doing well initially Billy yeah, Gattuso did very well, didn't he? Because it was a nice little reverse pass into the area. Gordon Jury certainly will regret the fact that his first time touched with the ball, took the ball so far away from him. This is uh, Amoruso, and way over the bar. desperation I, I feel on that he was never in a position to test the goalkeeper there and sometimes rather than have the shot play the ball across the, the front of the goals and look for somebody to run into the, the angle of the ball up goes Rutherford again beaten by Porini in the air this time throw Smith seven is uh, Desi Baker cross to cover is Fenland sensible option well just uh, getting a little too overconfident there Rangers charging down the field. Well, they return the uh, generous gesture. And Shelf will breathe easy once again. Amoruso crossfield to Petrich. Ferguson. And intercepted again, really, rather easily by Rutherford, who's having a really good game in this opening uh, 28 minutes or so, Billy. Since uh, they, they scored that, that goal, Shelburne have really played well when the, when Rangers have got the ball and they've, they've formed a, a 
wide, a wide group of players right across the pitch, and they're making it very difficult for Rangers Island to pass the ball in, in between them or indeed on the wide side of them. And really they're performing very well at this minute. Rutherford, Baker on the other side, they both work very hard to supplement that defence in midfield. Oh, there could be a bit of uh, a problem here. They're giving a free kick away in a dangerous area. The foul on Gattuso. forward and everybody back as the free kick is swung deep to the far post and the keepers lost it momentarily and the referee's whistle is already gone oh, the ball was out of play oh, touch and go really Amoruso. I think Shelburne had a little bit of luck there, but certainly the referee, the, the, the linesman rather, had his, had his flag up early, but um, I think uh, Rangers were just a little bit unlucky there. Well, Goff has taken a bit of a knock in the process and will receive some treatments. Now, on the substitutes bench tonight, we have uh, Amato, who it said had picked up um, a little injury, the 4.2 million signing from Spain. Maybe we'll see him in a couple in, uh, as the game progresses. I'm surprised, you know, that if he has an injury, I'm really surprised that he's on the bench because obviously you wouldn't want to, to see a situation, particularly with the strain in the stomach area, you wouldn't want to see that uh, accentuate into something uh, more serious. But um, if he's on the bench, then... It, I find it difficult to understand why he's not on the pitch because, you know, he, he, he comes as a confirmed goal scorer and that's exactly what Rangers look as though they need at this minute. Well, there was talk before the game whilst we were uh, talking to members of the Rangers delegation not wanting to risk this player, not wanting to risk that player. Maybe they've taken Shelbourne a little too lightly. Who knows at the moment? One goal behind they are. Certainly the directive from the Shelburne management team has been enjoy the experience and give as good as you possibly can. And they've been doing that up to this minute in time. And they've been doing really very well indeed. There's uh, the number seven, Desi Baker. Trained along with the likes of uh, David Beckham at Manchester United, but was one of the few that uh, didn't make it. That's right, but um, nice apprenticeship for a, for a young lad, and he certainly enjoying the game tonight. There he is again, and an offside. Van Bronckhorst and he as we said is used to European competition but not at this stage well, it's worth pointing out though again that this is nothing like uh, Glasgow Rangers first choice 11 though Billy Certainly not, um, you know, but at the minute that will be a little comfort for, for the, the fans and, and for Dick Advocat because really this is, this is a, a tie that they perhaps felt they would be through comfortably. Well, they've got two legs in which to do it, and the game of course still a long way from over. But they look to have just become a little frustrated. Well, that was sloppy play given away in the middle there. 14 Fenlon was there. Off goes Rutherford on the chase. Looking to close down Borini. Well, that's a nice ball. 
Tyler stabbed wide by 10, gets it into the penalty area, but once again, plenty of red shirts back to defend. And Rutherford just sending it a little further downfield to buy a little more breathing space for a well-worked defence so far. Gagan, Rutherford, just anywhere downfield will do just at this moment. Across to cover Amoruso. Morley's chasing everything that comes his way. McCarthy winning it in the air. 20 is Kelly. Across, though, is Porini. Six is Jonas Tern. Continues his run forward. That's Petrich's ball. Again, these almost slide rule type balls are just really rule too easy for Shelbourne just at this moment. Well, I, I also think that uh, Rangers' system is a little bit uncomfortable for some of the players. I think Alberts and Gattuso are both putting in a power of work. But to me, they, they, they've been played out of position. They're not comfortable in the position they've been asked to play. Alberts, a little bit of space to get the ball across. That's a decent delivery. Jury is up there. And it's kept in play, is it, by Goff? No, it isn't, says the referee. It's a corner to Rangers. And this time they leave two back Glasgow Rangers. Not a good delivery. Jonas Tern tries to attach his boot to the ball. He'll get another attempt on it here. And uh, it went straight at Graham. Eight there is Ferguson. Switching it wide, looking to try and find Porini. And the quality of ball, not of the required standard. Gagan's throw. And a route similar that we've seen for the uh, opening 20 minutes. Just volley downfield, looking for the runner, who in this case was Morley. <laughs> Kelly chasing across the edge of... Uh, the centre circle, and hurrying his man into a mistake. Gattuso was hanging out wide, this is uh, Porini. Tuso comes in field as uh, Gagan comes back to cover. You think perhaps though, Billy, that Shelburne are going to have to do a little more because uh, the current rate of things are just sitting back and um, inviting Rangers forward. It's a risky game to play as we're not even at the halfway stage yet. No, that's right, it is a risky game, but, um, you know, at the moment, Rangers really don't seem to have the craft and the, and, and the skill to, to break down that uh, Shelburne defence, and it, they're having a difficult time. Gattuso once again. Easily won in the air by Amoruso. To his Porini. And poor first touch there by Gordon Dury. free 
free kick. Well, the management team for Shelburne must be ecstatic of what they've seen so far. They'll be very pleased in, indeed, and they're entitled to be so because they have made life very difficult for Rangers. And, you know, as I say, they're allowing Rangers to have possession in their own half by making it very difficult for them to get any passes going when, when they're in the Shelburne half. So well, there's a real definite lack of invention in this Rangers side at the moment. They need some spark of inspiration from somewhere. Moment, it's just not forthcoming. Yeah. Big touch looking for Rutherford to come back and does so. is Fenlon. Smith. Baker. And is he going to continue his run? Yes, he does. Baker. Kelly's in the centre. And Rutherford arriving late. A little too much pace on the ball, perhaps. He got a little overexcited there. He certainly got himself into a little bit of a rash challenge by Petrich. And Baker made good grounds. Got himself into a good position. But um, he should never... Try to hit uh, the first defender with your, your cross. A, a little bit more care and attention would have worked wonders there. Well, McCarthy goes in, and it's bubbling around, and it's a goal, and it's Rutherford. Absolutely incredible, Rangers defence all over the place once again, and they were stood like statues, and there must have been two or three attempts. McCarthy came charging in, the keeper was absolutely nowhere. Morley couldn't get his foot on it, and Rutherford did, and there could be real history in the making here. Shelburne, two goals to nil up over Glasgow Rangers. It's certainly a real shot. Good delivery from the, from the corner kick, but the goalkeeper is nowhere. Gets himself under, gets himself lost. And defensively, Rangers are all sorts there. And Rutherford comes in, knocks into net, and certainly a very serious situation for Rangers now. Well, I tell you where I'd rather be having a drink after this game. 23, Graham. Rangers have got a lot of work to do if they're not to suffer huge embarrassment and what could possibly be irreparable damage to their season in July. Torini, they need a goal back before half-time and they've got three minutes in which to get it. and Glasgow Rangers supporters are sat in stunned silence. They're used to European disappointment, of course, over the past couple of years, but nothing, surely nothing, could have prepared them for what they've seen here so far. And after they'd started, the brighter of the two teams and looked as though they were about to take control and a hold of the game after just seven or eight minutes. This is Gattuso. to collect and this will go into touch as the trainer comes on well the question is can Rangers come back from this 
I mean, it is only two goals, but uh, what it must have done to their confidence. The problem they've got is that they don't seem to have any creation from midfield to break down Shelburne at the back, and I honestly think that they've got to try and make progress down, down either side. We've seen a little bit of that from Van Bonkhorst on the left-hand side, but very little on the right-hand side. And the problem is the two wide players, Gattus on the right, Alberts on the left-hand side, neither of them are, are natural at playing in that wide position, and they're not prepared to burst down those wide areas, and they're trying to play through the middle. Very congested area because Shelburne are pouring loads of players back there and they find it very difficult to see any gaps in their defence. Well, it's always difficult, of course, to pick games at this stage of the season to bring you on television, but we sure have picked the right one here. The other problem the Rangers have got is really that they haven't been questioned very much defensively, but they're twice that uh, Shelburne have scored. It was really with simple situations. It wasn't magnificent breakthroughs or anything like that, and they've been found wanting on two occasions. Forward by Fenlon once again, this time cleared by Petric. Just into touch. Well, the paint will be peeling off the walls in the Rangers' dressing room at half-time. And if Dick Advocat was in, uh, or under any illusions about just how difficult this job is, and this 45 minutes will have brought it right home to him. When he came here, he said he knew just what European success meant to this club. This, though, was certainly not in the script. 23 is Graham, across to uh, challenge is Fenlon. Amaruso. And that's going to be a corner. Now looking at the goalkeeper claiming not enough communication there between uh, defender and keeper. Safety first policy though, Jury screaming at his men to get them forward to join him. Porini's there. And it's going to go in, oh, just wide of the post. Looked as though Goff was beaten there, but that's the nearest they've come, Billy. Yes, it's a good delivery from the left-hand side, good touch on and Porini, I think, really should be throwing himself at that area, getting across the flight of the ball, but good touch from Jury and the most serious attempt we've seen from, from Rangers. Well, copious notes being made on the Rangers bench. I should imagine he's having trouble trying to find the words to describe how to sum up this opening 45 minutes here at Prenton Park this evening. Two minutes into injury time. And that indeed is the half-time whistle. And Booze greet the departing Rangers players as they literally run off the field. Well, the half-time score, Shelburne 2, Glasgow Rangers nil. We're going to take a very short commercial break. Join us again in a couple of minutes. live to Euro Cups with active driving active safety Subaru welcome back then live to Prenton Park with myself Tim Cable and Billy McNeil now Rangers are back out on the field ears burning after a half-time blast from Dick Advocar. now there's a couple of substitutions we're just going to look at the goals again here Billy well, this is the, the first one, and if you look, there's an absence right in the heart of the defence, and Freeney's got no option but to try and clear that ball there because he knows he's got an opponent behind him, and he's just a fall guy in the situation. But this is the one I think the goalkeeper comes for it, doesn't get anywhere near it. And look, at the, 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 there's a lack of anticipation and reaction in the Rangers' defence, and it's rather for to, to react first and, and scores the goal. Credit there to Fitzgerald, who actually uh, held the keeper back there. Well, he certainly, he certainly went to the ball and got across the goalkeeper. Join us again, then, in a couple of moments for the second half.
von Bix. Welcome back then, live to Prenton Park. The second half just underway. Two substitutions for Glasgow Rangers in the second half. Off have gone 18 Gattuso and 23 Graham. They've been replaced by the number 10, Amato, and the man in shot there, number 16, Johansson. Now, Billy, a lot is expected of Amato, who has arrived with a big reputation. Well, that's right, and uh, really, if you think of the tradition of Rangers centre forwards, in, including McCoy's, the, the last one, the big scorer. Are they going here? There's a chance coming up here. Great save by Goff. Wonderful save by Goff. How did he get his hand to that from Johansson? It looked as though he'd made a decision to dive, and his hand held up right at the last moment to divert the ball over the bar. Great piece of goalkeeping there by Goff, who's kept the minute with a series of uh, timely saves. Now Rangers upping the tempo in these opening minutes of this second half. That's a lovely turn by uh, Amato. Amato certainly made an impact because it was he who, who made the good work come in from the right-hand side, laid the ball into Johansson and only for that magnificent save of the goalkeeper, Jans would have scored with his first touch. Everybody forward again. This is uh, Porini across there to cover, though, is Gagan at the expense of another corner. Now, Shelbourne have defended their corners a little better than Rangers have defended theirs. Everybody back bar one for Shelbourne. Rangers leaving two. There's Amato, and he's right across everybody. Still not clear just yet, but it is now as Goff comes to claim. A lot of movement around there, and certainly the introduction of Johansson and Amato has done something to spice up this Rangers attack from the opening couple of minutes that we've seen so far. They're two goals behind, though. Here he is again, Johansson immediately finding more space. Everybody watching it go across. Very calm piece of play. Van Bronckhorst back into the penalty area. Goff comes out. And Shelburne just a little slow to get into their stride. Well, I, I certainly think they've been they've been tested and, and hit by the, the impact that uh, Rangers have made at the start of the second half. Certainly, Amato has made a very impressive start. Good control, took the ball at defenders, took it past them and laid in a good ball, ball to Johansson. He's had a, a real Desi good Baker start. Finally, the... Morley, Baker going for the return. A cross, though, to cover is Petrich. Across his own goal, not the safest place to be at this stage as Kelly goes off on the chase. Kelly still snapping at the heels of Amoruso. Now Rutherford's there now. Well, they held off the initial onslaught from Rangers in the first 15 minutes of the first half. Van Bronckhorst, 16 is... Uh, Johansson just runs away from him. Smith covering. And not a good night all round. Celtic drawing currently 0-0 uh, with St. Patrick's. Baker losing out to Gordon Dury. And Dury running into no man's land. to cover, shrugging his man away quite easily. Turn spreading it out wide to Ferguson. And an offside flag. 
certainly one thing's evident that Perini has obviously been instructed to push forward at all times, not to allow, not to worry too much about Rutherford, but to go and push himself right on the top of him. And anything goes down that right right hand side, he's been asked to chase. And Johansson's going to do a job similar to that, but perhaps playing a much more forward position in this left hand side. It's difficult for any to, to, to actually say anything to the Shelburne team after that first half performance, apart from more of the same, please. Well, I think that's exactly what... It, it, I'm quite convinced that Dermot Keeley will have told his team to, to expect an onslaught at the start of the second half, and if they can withstand that, then they'll be in a very comfortable position. Johansson's there as the rain begins to uh, fall. And it's very fine raining. It's making this surface a little slippery. This is Gordon Jury. Still Gordon Jury out wide to number 10, Amato. Jury takes up position on the edge of the six yard area. And it's a corner to Glasgow Rangers. Amato has made a real impact. The first thing in his thought is to get at a defender and try to go past him. There's Johansson on the line. Not a good delivery, though. But it's very slippery in there now. Rain been coming down for about 10 or 15 minutes or so here. It's not been the greatest day in uh, Birkenhead. Here's Porini, still going. Still more Rangers pressure as Fitzgerald goes across to cover his man. Oh, the free kick uh, again being conceded in a really dangerous position and rather fortunate, I think, there, Billy, to get that free kick. I think if you attack defender with the ball, you're always liable to get uh, fouls given against the the defender, and that's exactly what Amato's got in his mind. Everybody forward, as you can see there. There's Johansson right on the back post. They go near, though, headed up into the air by Smith, and it comes back. That's a good save once again. Well, Van Bronckhorst, that's the best shot in anger he's had so far during the entire game. Eight is Ferguson. And again, plenty forward for Rangers here. But just a little too much pace on there. As again, Amato made his way into the six-yard area and was looking likely to cause trouble. Goff has had a, a marvellous game so far. Here's Rutherford. He's not had too bad a game himself. Forward by McCarthy. Rangers ball, though. Van Bronckhorst. Danny goes looking for a penalty, Alberts, and was never likely to get it. This is Amato making space. Amato still can't get it away, though. Shelbourne. Van Bronckhorst, they don't want to leave him clear with a chance to shoot on goal. And he was always going away from the goal, and he wins another corner. Much more positive this opening, Billy, though, from Rangers. Very much so. There we see that shot from Van Bronckhorst. And I think really the deflection took it away from goals. He was trying to hit it with the outside of his foot, but the thing that's made the impact is Perini going down that uh, right-hand side and Johansson down the left-hand side. Well, Amato is not even marked at the moment. So you may well have seen him there just nip away to the back post. And they've got to be careful there, Shelbourne. That's Ferguson. Petric snapping at his heels, though, is Kelly. And that's going to drop for Gagan. Up in the air once more, though, by Amoruso. Goff 
of the clearance. Yeah, the easy win in here that time for Amoruso. Back though to cover is Scully. Solid game Scully's had. They've been very solid at the back. Certainly in that first half, they didn't have an awful lot of pressure imparted on them. This second half, they're going to have to work for the money. I'll tell you what, though, Billy, this would be like something out of the X-Files if they did win this. That's uh, Desi Baker. Good try, though, from distance. Fenland. Chasing is Morley. That's back across to Petrich. Johansson and Smith. Again, still uh, a remarkably casual attack there by Rangers. Van Bronckhorst. And the ball did not go out of play. This is Amaruso. Van Bronckhorst. Rangers fans picking up the tempo on the terraces to try and get their team re-motivated. Oh, I don't think they need any help. That's Desi Baker going down there as Kelly slipped forward to try and put him through. And again, that was a dangerous situation there, Billy, for Glasgow Rangers. Two on two. They seem prepared to leave themselves in that situation because they know they've got to push for, they've got to get a breakthrough, although it, 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 it might seem just a little bit strange with the second leg to come up. And through the middle goes Morley, Morley into the penalty area! Oh, Morley! Number three for Shelburne! And what a marvellous finish! Really coolly done by Morley! And it's going from bad and bad to worse and worse for Glasgow Rangers. And the boos beginning to ring around here now. It's a disaster, this, for Glasgow Rangers. It certainly is, and really that's where they've had the problem, because whatever pressure they've, they've imparted on Shelburne in the second half, that's the first attack that Shelburne have had, and once again the defence has been breached and breached so very easily, right through the middle. And to, to be fair to Morley, when the chance came, he took it magnificently. Can Rangers come back from this? It would be some monumental effort. It's going to need every ingredient that they've not shown so far. They've got a corner, though, and it'll be taken by Albert. Outswinging corner. Handball. And Rangers have got a penalty. Well, an immediate reply. Stepping up is uh, the number 11, Albert. You can see it there. Unlucky for Shelburne. And unlucky for McCarthy. To get them back into the game and resurrect the season. Albert! And he does it. Sends got the wrong way. And maybe that will provide the spark of inspiration that Rangers have needed. Well, certainly it was a very silly thing for McCarthy to do, no matter how, how ominous a goal seems. And don't put your hand up and give away a penalty, but so competently dispatched by Alberts. What a game we've got here. Shelburne three, Rangers one. And the thing is that Shelburne look likely to score when they come forward almost at every time in this second half. We noted how Rangers were leaving themselves a little open at the back. They were punished literally a minute after we said it. And maybe there's more goals in it yet, but what a night of European football here on Eurosport. So early into the season, this is uh, Johansson. Rangers coming forward. Johansson can't get the ball in this time. Charging back to assist there was Morley. 
And you won't see a cooler, better finish on the European circuit this season than Morley's. Absolutely superb. It was indeed, but it was right through the heart of the Rangers defence, and really the, 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 the coach will be really disappointed. Ferguson, with that. another shot, good save once again. That shot from Albert. Albert is happier in that position because it gives him the opportunity to get right there in the heart of things, get a strike or two at goals, and we saw the power that, with which he can hit the ball. And once again, a tremendous save by Goff. Well, remember that that does can constitute an away goal for uh, Rangers in this tie, a vital away goal as well. Remember, we're here after uh, the tie was switched for security reasons to Preton Park. This is uh, Johansson. That's a decent ball, and it was just a little too far there for Amato. But there was uh, plenty of time there for Van Bronckhorst to measure his cross. He looks a very accomplished player, and he's playing out of position tonight, I would think. And, but that was a delightful ball, and really you would be looking for Amato and Gordon Jury to be attacking that ball. It was a beautiful flight in behind it, eliminated the defenders and gave them a chance to get a header on goal. Well, the noise being generated by the uh, six or so thousand in here is equivalent to about three or four times that now. Here's Rutherford, gets a good ball across once again. Morley was lurking on the back post. Jonas turned to get player away. Amaruso. Porini. Nine is Gordon Dury. In front of him, standing his ground, is McCarthy. Eight is Ferguson, making his way forward is Van Bronckhorst. There was space there for him. Now away comes Baker. Well, again, just uh, a little overexcited. And getting the ball downfield, but it'll give them some respite in the defence, which has been again under almost constant siege since the second half began. Van Bronckhorst ball forward. This is Amato. He's drifted out a bit after... Uh, a promising open, opening five or six minutes from him at the beginning of this half. Baker intercepts once more as Rangers give possession away. Four is Petrich. And on the chase to cover it out is Gagan. Big week of football, remember, on Eurosport after last night. Germany's 4-1 defeat of Spain and England's 1-0 victory over the Republic of Ireland in the uh, UEFA Under-18 Championships. Now uh, remember, that all looks as though it's heading for an England-Germany final on Sunday. You'll be able to see that live on Eurosport. A range of substitution about to be made. And don't forget, tomorrow night, Ajax against Copenhagen at 6 o'clock, followed by Germany against Portugal at 9 o'clock. And then on Saturday, another high-profile friendly as uh, Ferguson, that's Ian Ferguson, is about to come on for number 6, Jonas Turn. As we're seeing another high-profile friendly PSG against Athletic Bilbao, and that is on Saturday night. And then another full week of football next week as well. So a seamless year of football on Eurosport as we get into this new season. And what a start we've had here at Prenton Park tonight. Sheldon 3, Glasgow Rangers 1. And on the cards, potentially one of the biggest shocks certainly in Rangers' illustrious European history. Should they, of course, carry this through a second leg? But remember, they've got to go to Ibrox next week, and it will be a whole different atmosphere there than it is here. The most difficult part then, Billy, is still yet to come, though, for Shelburne. Well, it certainly is, and there's a lot of football to be played in this game still, but um, you know, the thing that will be annoying for Rangers and really disturbing them is the fact that without being in the game all that much, whenever they get possession, Shelburne look as though they're likely to score. Amaruso's crossfield ball again, and a little too much pace is greeted with rapturous applause and cheers from the travelling Irish contingent away to uh, our right. Rain 
has temporarily abated here. But it still made the surface uh, a little greasy. And perhaps we've not seen the last of the defensive mistakes. Amaruso's ball forward. Distance in there, take some of the heat off as Rangers come forward once again. They don't have to wait too long until Rangers just concede possession. And back they have to go. Four is Petric, Van Bronckhorst. Shoving the back on uh, Amata, but he keeps his uh, legs well. But a good challenge there by Scully. And Kelly is badly challenged there by Ian Ferguson, who's only been on the field a matter of seconds. And a yellow card given to Ferguson, who was really nowhere near the ball there, did he? No, he was certainly very late, and, um, you know, but it was a careless pass by the other Ferguson, young Barry Ferguson, and really, he put Ian Ferguson in a problem. Certainly can have no complaints about the booking. The referee in actual fact has handled the game very well because he's not, that's the first booking he's made in the game and you would normally think for contest played at this level there might have been one or two more bookings but certainly he's let, he's let the game flow and he's kept it very fast. Well, the credit to the teams as well. There's some of the joyous Irish supporters that have made their way across the Irish Sea. The expression hasn't changed so far on the face of uh, Dick Apicart. It's almost as if he's waiting for his side to wake up as Kelly is uh, taken from the field momentarily. Well, it looks as though he's OK. But he's been a bit quiet in the second half, Rutherford, not been in the play as much as he was during the first. Certainly the Rangers have been a lot more positive in the second half, and particularly on that right-hand side, he's had to what, do most of his work going back the way to, to look after Perini breaking in that right-hand side. Shelburne just using up as many minutes as they can without incurring the wrath of the uh, referee as the rain begins to come down once again here at Prenton Park. And this is not going to make it easy, this, but it's uh, a real uh, flash storm, this, almost. That's a good turn. Still going out there. Final ball was very poor. Headed back up in the air, though, by Ferguson. Amato is there. Amato! Good save by Goff. He doesn't seem to be the quickest player, but he had the beating of his man there. But he's very sharp, good control, knows exactly what he wants. He's one thing in his mind inside that box, and that's to have a strike at goal. But he has certainly been in inspirational form this evening, uh, Goff. Petrich. Course. does well to cut inside his man reasonable delivery but just a little too near the goalkeeper at the end though well I wonder what odds you could have got on this before the start of the game I think you'd get any any amount of odds in this had you suggested this. In fact, you might have ended up in uh, in an asylum somewhere had you suggested <laughs> scoreline like this. But um, that's what football is, isn't it? Well, they are the Rangers supporters. <laughs> Barely quiet for minute during the build-up to this game and for the opening 15 minutes but even they well-seasoned travelers that they are cannot quite believe what they've seen so far here this evening as Amoruso plays that ball forward a 
Well, this is no good for Rangers. They need to get the ball down. You can see the rain beginning to just pour straight down on this field. And Nimi, the goalkeeper, has literally had nothing to do apart from pick the ball out the back of the net on three different occasions. Amato, again dropping deeper, looking for possession. Ferguson. Corini with the throw. Nine is Jury, intercepted by Gagan. Ten is uh, Amato. Does well, McCarthy's there though, still going Amato. One way then the other, but then good play by McCarthy. Well, but again another generous decision perhaps from the referee. Certainly instigated by the assistant referee out there, but um, it's difficult just to see whether or not uh, McCarthy was holding, but Amato is a real handful when the, when the ball's in his area. Danger here for Sheldon. Two still back for uh, Glasgow Rangers. Guarding the lone Shelbourne striker. There's Amoruso, there's Porini, there's Amato. That's a good delivery. Again, it was well defended, though, uh, Billy. Good delivery and a difficult one to, to defend positively. And really, the, the defender's got no option but to play over as far as he does here. Well, uh, McCarthy and Scully combining, and it's back across the edge of the area, and it's off the line. It's still not clear. Is it over? Yes, it is. Skidding across there and take your pick as to uh, just who got the final touch on that. Well, certainly I don't think you could argue with Amato. He's definitely claiming it, but, uh, you know, good goal line clearance there. We, we see that, and Amato really does strike it, and yeah, you have got to give it to Definitely him. a right decision. Definitely the right decision. Certainly was, and Amato good finish and he'll be happy that's his first goal for his new club desperately unlucky though i mean they almost cleared it just jumped too soon and the keeper goff who's done nothing wrong all night but they were all back they gave mccarthy scully and baker scrambling around but that ball was buzzing around really quickly and this is the type of reply that Dick Advocar would have expected from his side of very highly paid international players. But it must say it didn't look like it until a couple of minutes ago. No, I think the biggest thing is that um, he was looking for a response in the second half. And he certainly got it. Macho for me has made a big difference up front. He's been sharp, alert. Not so much there, but um, looking for the ball and always wants to be involved in the thick of things. Petrich. And that now has got the Rangers fans singing. Two away goals, remember. They now have. Here's Van Bronckhorst. Got to go for the return. Is he Van Bronckhorst? He's still there, Van Bronckhorst. Three all. <laughs> when will the drama end here at Brenton Park? But it was just. Very well worked move once again. Intelligent running then from Van Broncos. But what about that for a little back heel? Well, it was a real quality goal because Van Broncos made it broke from midfield, knew exactly where he was sent, sent the pass in into a matter, holds up well, and that back heel worked to perfection. But a tremendous finish by Van Broncos. But it's all changed now. Well, incredible stuff here we've had tonight. From 3-0 down, literally seven or eight minutes ago, Rangers are back level at 3-all. Well, it's coincided, I think, with the... There's the uh, weather. And Rangers forward again. This is Johansson. They're going for the victory here now. Johansson still going. Van Bronckhorst with the throw. Petrich, the celebrations are beginning once again. They've suddenly regained their voices. Amoruso. 14 is Ferguson. 
Well, it'll certainly be interesting to see who claims that third goal, that second goal, by the way. I'll put my money on Amato. Nine is Gordon Dury. Amato, here he is, Dury continues his run. Edge of the six-yard area he is now. Here's Amato, still going. Still going, Amato. It looks as though he'd gone left, found the space, and then cut back inside and defeated himself almost. He certainly likes that ball, doesn't he? He likes taking it to opponents and to defenders. But, you know, I think it's been a much more impressive performance, obviously, and it's all down to the width that he has created. His system wasn't working in the first half. He changed it, put your hands on the left-hand side, got Perini to break down that right-hand side, put a match up to support Jury, and things have worked for him. Well, they cannot quite believe they were 3-0 up against Glasgow Rangers. Remember we said Kilmarnock last year just hung on for a 3-2 victory over Sheldon. But Abagar breathing a huge sigh of relief here because his team were literally embarrassed for over an hour by the part-timers from Ireland. But this game is not over yet. Fourteen is Fenland looking for uh, Rutherford and Borini guiding it out. few sides, Billy, around Europe that can match this for following in terms of vocal support and volume. Incredible. Well, they've certainly got vocal support and, you know, the team in the second half, well, particularly after going 3-0 down, they've given them something to, to cheer about. But uh, certainly a much more impressive performance the second half. But is there something that you can put your finger on there? Because, I mean, after they went that third goal down... I mean, was there something that happened, something that we could see that actually turned the game around? I mean, there didn't seem to be anything new from the uh, from the beginning of the second half. Well, they got the, the they got the first goal very very quickly and they got it very cheaply. I felt uh, at the time McCarthy put his hand up needlessly. Um, you know, the, okay, it's all very well that you think the ball's going over your head, but you're never entirely sure that the, that the forward is going to get a good strike at goal. Put your hand up, you give a penalty kick away. And you get put the game back in the, in the, ch in, in the chances of the, the, the other team, and that's what happened. Alberts took the penalty kick so confidently, and bingo, they're now three off. Sheridan is on. The number nine for Shelburne. Well, they're still getting behind their uh, their side. Still plenty of noise coming from the Irish as well. Now, can they come back from being pegged back to three all and stun Rangers again? They've got uh, just over or just under a quarter of an hour remaining. And this is where Rangers have looked, quite frankly, a bit of a mess defensively. Wasn't the best of, uh, of deliveries, but they still might get some comeback here, Sheldon. Fitzgerald and Johansson, who's certainly been uh, pretty impressive, and Albert's there across to cover. Long throw coming into the penalty area. Is there? Uh, leaves it for uh, the number nine, Sheridan. Just come on the field, Sheridan. Gets the ball back again. Desi Baker still going. Needs to get it across now. And it's just behind for a corner, is it? Yes, it is. Bit of a weight problem there, Bill. <laughs> now, Fenland with the corner. That's not a bad delivery. The keeper came again before deciding to uh, step back onto his line. It looks very, very undecided. Did the right thing eventually, though. He stayed on his line, allowed his defenders to clear the ball and to deal with it, and that was the right thing to do. These, as we said, very tricky conditions to defend. Set pieces and corners from. Another one flies in there. Sheridan's there. 
Can't get hold of it all we can now, though. Sheridan gets his foot to the ball, but it's walloped clear downfield. Shelburne keep possession, and then a bit of a mix-up between Rutherford and... Uh, Desi Baker. But again, Shelburne seemed to have... Uh, this is maybe what Shelburne should have been doing, perhaps, Billy, instead of sitting back inviting Rangers to come at them. There was an awful lot of pressure for 15 or 20 minutes inside this second half. And maybe they should have done what they're doing now, which is come forward a little bit more and give uh, the Rangers defence something to think about. I think they were forced into defending as much as anything else. You know, all of a sudden, Rangers pushed two, for, two players through the middle, had, had wide players, particularly Johansson on, on the left-hand side here. But, um, you know, they, they, they've been forced into this. Rangers have definitely lifted their levels of play in the second half, or indeed, since they lost that third goal. And three is uh, Amoruso. Petric. Johansson, they're not tight on Johansson. They're allowing him to get control of the ball and run at them. Johansson, that's another good ball. 4-3, and it's Amato. Well, oh, this time it's too much as the crowd spills onto the field to embrace their new hero. What an incredible turnaround. Well, he certainly knows how to put the ball in the net, but a good run here from Johansson. Delightful ball right to the back post, and you can't leave this fill on marked in that area, and Shelburne have certainly paid the, the penalty bit. What an astonishing turnaround. Well, they certainly haven't been tight enough on Johansson. Smith has been uh, allowing him far too much space to bring the ball under control and then choose just where he wants to go. And that was an absolutely pinpoint perfect cross for Amato. And all he had to do was put it past Goff. Well, he certainly got lots of pace, but it's all down to the manager appreciating that he hadn't chosen the, the correct players in the first half. He's put out a team in the second half with a little bit of pace down this left-hand side, Perini pushing forward and... Amato has certainly proved that he can finish if you give him the, the opportunities. Well, who would have believed it? 3-0 up, Shelburne were after an hour, and they're now 4-3 down. still some more goals left in this final seven minutes. This man will go on the hunt. Amato, but he's covered this time by McCarthy. The Shelburne are looking a little tired now, Billy. Well, they must be totally disillusioned and shattered because they, at 3-0, they looked as though well they were going to get an incredible result, but really it swung round the other way, and that's down to attitude and a positive aspect from Rangers. Certainly they got the luck with that first goal, the penalty kick, but from then on in, They've really proved that they can, they, they can play and they've got pride in their performances. More danger than here for Shelburne as Rangers have another corner. It's another in-swing delivery. And uh, it's another penalty. No. Well, the referee slightly undecided. We've got to pick this one up here again. Now, was Amato fouled? Well, the referee was certainly in no hesitation whatsoever. No, oh, it's a... There's another... It's a clear penalty kick, and, you know, to, once again, it was McCarthy, and it's astonishing. And once again, it will be the number 11, Albert sends him the wrong way again. Rangers 5, Shelburne 3. Just as Rangers were falling apart from every corner in the first half, Shelburne have been doing it in the last 20 minutes. Quite incredible turnaround in this game. Well, you'd have to look at this game, Billy, and say, did Rangers take this side too lightly at the beginning of this match, or was Shelburne really three goals better up to one hour into this match. 
I think there's a combination of both. Um, I think they did take them just perhaps just a little bit lightly. Uh, paid the penalty simply because Shelburne hit them on the break. And, you know, if you really analyse it, with about four chances at goals, they scored three goals. But, you know, since then, Rangers have come back. Certainly, the, the penalty kicks were given away very, very cheaply. And it's astonishing to see the same defender handle the ball twice in the same match. Five away goals, enough to see Rangers through? I would have thought so. Well, Goff, who'd had such a good game, and in fact has had such a good game, to end it being beaten five times, it's just quite incredible. And somebody's going to write and say how many times I've said incredible in the past 15 minutes, but you, <laughs> you've got to be here, I suppose, Billy. Well, I... It's incredible because he's had a good game and he's, he's not it's incredible. Had, I know that it's incredible. It really is. Um, he's not had uh, he's not had a chance with any of the goals. Well, a real shame. The game and the victory may belong to Rangers, but the night surely must belong in some small way to Sheldon for the performance up to this first hour. Just a few more minutes remain then for Glasgow Rangers here. And an almighty let-off they've had. Jury makes his way into the penalty area, waiting for the ball to be delivered by Porini. And a long-range effort, and uh, I wonder whether they're going to get that ball back. I doubt it. Oh, it came back very quickly, didn't it? They want some more goals, don't they? Well, it's certainly not going to get any easier for Glasgow Rangers as the rounds progress in the UEFA Cup. But we said at the beginning that uh, it would take some time for this side to function, or begin to function as a unit. We've already seen uh, a change in thinking from Dick Abagay. He wasn't afraid to change his system. Began with a 4-4-2, and it's not the way he's finished, as you can see from the start that we've been playing, which has brought Rangers back into the game. But that, Billy, surely is the measure of a good coach. Realises when something is wrong and actually does something positive about it. I think very much so that um, he did do that at half-time. Obviously, he had a great deal of thought in that first half. His system wasn't working for him. Came out... Johansson on the left-hand side has been very impressive, but for me the biggest feature of it was the fact that Amato looked so comfortable, so hungry in, in and around that box, and uh, it has all come from. And this is Sheridan. Can they get a goal back? Is there something left for Sheldon? One more high on a night that has already bought them so many. Desi Baker's corner. Cleared, though, powerful header by Petrich. A potential two-on-one situation there. And Ferguson is down injured. Shelburne are uh, intent on getting the game underway, but I think they just didn't actually notice that he was down, and he will actually have uh, some attention given to him as we approach the final minute of the game. So summing up, would you use the word incredible then? <laughs> not again, surely, Tim. A man of your intelligence can do better than that. But uh, I no, want, I it has been an incredible you. game, hasn't it? <laughs> Rangers break. Now there's three on one over the halfway line if they can make it pay here. 14 is Ferguson. Shelburne back, though. But there's still plenty of space here. That's another good delivery and another chance, and that was a good block challenge. McCarthy there. Gordon Jury, he's seen, uh, he's had very few opportunities in this second half, which is surprising considering the number of goals. He's had a quiet 45 minutes, uh, Gordon Jury. He's worked hard in that position, but the, the, the difference in the second half is that... Um, another chance here. They're just trying to tee it up. This is Amato still going! Oh, that would have been a real class finish by Amato. He's got a real nose for goals, though. He's illustrated that, but 
prefers to take people on, very gets himself into a very comfortable position and really miscues the shot. Well, of course, um, there is the uh, forgotten man of... Uh, there's the forgotten man of uh, Negri, who's actually playing with the reserves at the moment, uh, Billy. And... Uh, no way back for him, surely. I wouldn't have thought so. I don't think there is a place for him. I think that they're trying to get him another club. Now they're coming forward once more. That's Desi Baker. That's another chance for uh, Shelburne to get another goal there. There was an opening there momentarily for Baker. Snatched at it. Never looked comfortable on it. And uh, really missed a, a reasonable opportunity. But go back to Gordon Jury. One of the things that's it's been happening in the second half because of the wood that was created the, the, the front players are in the areas where they're likely to score and although we haven't seen a lot of jury we've certainly seen enough of a matter to suggest that he can be a goal scorer but he's still a tremendous hard worker is he though Gordon Jury he's a threat good pace prepared to work hard makes lots of runs and yeah, could be a good foil for a matter. Just a couple of minutes of injury time then to go here at Prenton Park. Rangers not in any particular hurry now. And uh, that's one area. Nimi hasn't really had uh, a lot of chances to make up for the mistakes of uh, earlier on. Petridge's ball downfield. as we said had had such a great game and to end this night he'll wake up tomorrow morning and wonder how as the whole team surely will they conceded five goals in a little under 17 minutes well they've done just about enough to make sure they're still on speaking terms with the manager Glasgow Rangers I'm sure he will have something to say about that first hour's performance from his side, Billy. I think, obviously, he had a few words at half-time because he certainly saw, we saw a different Rangers team in the second half, but he'll have learned something as well about his players, and in this situation, it's, it's when you do learn about the players, and he'll have seen that he's had a team that had pride in their performance. They saw themselves go three goals behind, but once he got the, break, the first goal, there was only going to be one winner. ready is Kelly has the ball taken off of him and Shelburne win a free kick just inside the Rangers half get it going quickly looking for Rutherford down there such a great battle with uh, Perini in the first half and he came out on top he's not been such an attacking threat in the second half simply because Perini put his personality on on to Rutherford and forced him to play in his own half where he wasn't comfortable. As Fenland swinging his uh, bit of the ball, but the free kick had been given the way of uh, Glasgow Rangers. 12 is uh, Van Bronckhorst, closed down by Desi Baker. Nine is Jury, goes down under a particularly heavy challenge. Play on as the referee, Fitzgerald. Gets another bite of the ball, Fitzgerald. Baker tries to bring it under control, but Bronco shrugs him off. And is then brought to the floor by Fitzgerald. Play on, says the referee. Johansson again, that's another great ball across by Johansson. They're queuing in the penalty area. This time, though, Shelburne a little more alert to the situation. Fenlon in there at the last to save the day once more. Gordon Dury. Well, maybe that's been the difference, uh, or it's going to be the difference, rather, Billy, is the fact that possibly in recent years, maybe not being disparaging about the previous management uh, management team, but maybe someone with Advocar's experience of realizing situations that need to be changed and having the experience 
to actually go with a decision that can make a fundamental change in the way the game has gone. Well, they certainly made the right decision tonight, but you've also got to remember the, the, the quality and the standing of the team that he's playing against. Well, that is the final whistle here at Prenton Park. And the final score, Shelburne 3, Glasgow Rangers 5. Up until one hour, Shelburne led three goals to nil before an onslaught from Glasgow Rangers brought them five goals in 17 minutes. A marvellous night's entertainment here from Prenton Park. And the Shelburne team go over to salute their fans. They're going to wake up and just wonder where it went wrong in the second half. But they've done their club really proud tonight. Well, they have. I mean, they gave their all. They were on the, the edge of creating a real surprise, but it wasn't to be. We'll take a short break. Welcome back then, we're live here at Prenton Park, myself, Tim Capel and Billy McNeil. An astonishing night of football we've had. Shelburne 3, Glasgow Rangers 5. And uh, astonishing and incredible are those two words that we use rather often. But they really did sum up the proceedings this evening. Yeah, it was uh, an unusual night, shall we say, that, um, you know, it looked as though Rangers were dead and buried. And now are played 3-0 down got the break of the first goal and then took uh, Shelburne apart after that. OK, we're going to have a, a look at some of the uh, goals again. Now, this was the opening goal, Billy. Great run by, by Baker on the right-hand side. But the ball into the middle, really. Perini's got no, no chance. He's got to make some contact with the ball, makes the wrong contact, ends up giving an away goal. But Any fault to the goalkeeper there? No, I couldn't blame, couldn't blame the goalkeeper there. This one, he leaves his line, and once he leaves his line, he's got to make connection. Never in a position to, to do anything with it. And there you see Rutherford, Rutherford re reacted quicker than the Rangers' defence. Well, of course, it's a two-legged uh, tie, remember, as we uh, have a look at the third goal. Now, this really was a very cool piece of finishing. It was. Delightful piece of finishing. Waited to the goalkeeper, made his move, took his time and just delicately placed it over him. And at that stage, it looked... And that, uh, that was on the hour, yeah. and that looked as though it was game over. It looked like game set and match, didn't it? But... Um, but but then we had uh, the instances with the with the penalties, and there were um, there was a couple of decisions that went Rangers' way with three kicks. But but McCarthy then with two inexplicable handballs and no. just nervousness, I suppose, in trying to just well, keep a hold of uh, of the lead that they had. I suppose so. He knew he was underneath the ball certainly, but um, when he put his hand up, it was an obvious penalty, and really Alberts dispatched it brilliantly. Now, talk about the substitutions that Rangers made at, uh, at half-time. We saw the introduction of Amato and uh, Johansson. Now, Johansson was playing out wide. He was given an awful lot of space, wasn't he? I mean, neither Fitzgerald never really got close enough to him. No, he didn't, but uh, I, thought, I felt he made a big contribution to the second half. But there's, uh, there's that first penalty. We didn't see the offence, but... Uh Look how competently that's dispatched, and that, get, that was a real lifeline for Rangers at that stage. I was going to say, how important was that for them to... I mean, they've been trying for an hour and they've not got anywhere, but to get one back as soon as Shelbourne had gone three ahead. Well, this is, this is the, the next one, and there's a little bit of luck about it, but... Uh, there, was, there was a question of whether maybe that ball actually drifted out of play. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think he retrieved it. He got the, he got the break there, but the goalkeeper so unfortunate there not to, to have completed the save. But, you know, you've got to compliment the matter. This one was magnificent. There's the back heel, and look at Van Bronckhorst. He knows exactly where he wants. Not a lot of room to tuck it away there. Does it so competently. Well, that's the difference. Smith, again, just failing to pick up the uh, continuing run of Giovanni Van, uh, Van Bronckhorst. Now, of the new signings, of course, to, don't forget that we've not seen Andrei Kinchelskis. Uh, we've not seen Rob Wallace, of course. There's injuries as well. Don't forget they still have got Negri. This is a very, very powerful team, more so perhaps this year than at any other time in the past few years. 
Well, it certainly looks that way, and there looks to be a powerful threat up front. There's no doubt whatsoever about that. Amato impressed me very much tonight. Van Brockhorst did very well in a strange position. Much more comfortable in the second half when he had someone on, on his left-hand side. But... Uh, this was the uh, this was the other penalty that yeah, came was. just moments after. And McCarthy again, again a second hand ball. Inexplicably, yes. But um, once again, the goalkeeper guess he's wrong again, and very calm, very cool. You know, no danger what he was going to do. This was a marvellous run by Johansson. He takes the the, the, the full back on, gets in enough position, but. Poor defence, they're all drawn towards the ball, but that's a match of, makes himself a little bit of space and good header dispatches that one well. He's, he, he'll be delighted with his performance tonight. That's it then for us from Prenton Park this evening. Myself, Tim Capel and Billy McNeil. Join us again tomorrow. We're off to Copenhagen for Ajax of Amsterdam against Copenhagen in a friendly match. And later on tomorrow night, there's also Germany against Portugal in the uh, UEFA under-18s. Germany, very impressive indeed. And it could be all lining up for England against Germany in the final on Sunday. A game which, of course, you can see live on Eurosport. We've had an astonishing night here at Prenton Park. We'll leave you with the final score of Rangers 5, Shelburne 3. From myself, Tim Cable and Billy McNeil, a very good evening to you all. Euro comes with... Active driving, active safety, Subaru.